All right, looks like we're live. Looks like I'm not muted. I definitely haven't forget to hit the stream button, so it didn't actually just randomly, uh, I don't know, me talking on an empty screen without going live on YouTube, because that would never happen. I have never done that. <laughs> I'm going to pretend that's a joke. Yeah. More importantly, I'm just going to pop out the chat so I can have it visible, and ah, there we go. Should I set this up earlier? Oh, well, that's on me. Haven't done a live stream in a while for this kind of video. And frankly, I missed that because that was fun, man. So we're going to do it. I know. It's like, I do things I like. More importantly, hi, everyone. I'm Mary. Today we're going to check out a fan with too much times. Episode 35, Heralds of the End of Star Wars for Warhammer 40k. I did that in one breath. Nice. More importantly, it's been a while since I've gotten to the show because I was sick for a month straight and it sucked. So now I'm feeling somewhat better and I'm going to pretend anything else is not exacting... Any kind of physical toll on me? Because I want to do this, damn it. So we're going to do it. You guys know the deal. There's a link below to the original video that I definitely have the right one attached to. Well, unless I don't, in which case it'll be fixed by the time you notice. And we'll get started. Again, link below. Hit it up. And let's get started. I just said that twice, didn't I? Usually I edit this out, but we're live, so I can't do that. <sighs> repetitive thoughts going repetitive. Who'd have thought? Yoink. All right. One second. Just got to move this to the side. Move it there. Honestly, I've been looking forward to this because I've heard a lot of good things about the episode. So I have no idea what I'm really getting into here other than it's apparently one of those oh my god fan, what are you doing type moments. Also, for anyone who doesn't know, I am currently streaming from a sauna. Yeah, that is never a problem. Ever. I never feel like heat stroke would be a nice change of pace because that would never be a thing. Yeah. All right, let's start this baby up. I'm never referring to it that way again. That was disturbing. I don't like it. No. Yoink. Okay. Also, hey chat. What's up, guys? Let's get started. The Inquisitor felt a growl. Oh, we're jumping right in. From deep in his chest. The agony in his split side cutting into his every thought and instinct Dude. the longer this contest was drawn out. Before his eyes twirled the green blade of the heretical Jedi Master who now faced him. The heretical man Jedi? grinning widely at How his opponent under a storm of blood. Oh no, dreadlocks. he's thinking all of them are heretics. Commissar Tarandor drove in with his chain sword. And the adamantium died? teeth of his specially issued weapon grinding and screaming against the energy blade which intercepted it. Damn! Specialty issued chain swords actually hold up to lightsabers. Adamantium, we knew it was good, but damn. The Jedi seemed shocked by the act. His sword yeah! light suddenly That's not usually how it glow, goes. Offering Tar Weiler the opportunity he had been Tar. seeking. Stepping in, Tar ignored all his pain. Trembling arms straightened as he poised his black rapier in for a stab. And the Jedi couldn't even see the attack coming. Which added to Weiler's rage a moment later when the man precognitively jerked himself back. Psychic the powers are bullshit. Blade slicing over and through the robes which covered his chest, drawing a thin red line on his tanned skin and prompting the Jedi to spin back in an athletic withdrawal. Let me guess, it's poison? Damn you! Tar cursed, staggering, his free hand clapping down over his saber wound again. Because he's actually to keep injured, his yeah. Feet. Tarandor did not let up, however, and was not idle while his chain sword dragged the Jedi saber down. With his other hand, he aimed. Wait, it did what? This is one of those weird interactions because I know a chain sword against normal physical things do have the ability to drag them down. It's also one of the problems with an actual chainsaw, where if you don't have a good handle of it, it could drag itself out of your hand. But it's kind of weird that a lightsaber, which is. This is, it's energy projection in a casing. I guess it has enough pull and interaction with it because it can't break through that it can pull it down? I guess it's the same physics as how you can block and batter someone's lightsaber away because it acts like a physical sword when it's against another lightsaber. I'm just going to go with that aspect. It does seem weird, though, for a physical thing to interact with an energy being or an energy construct. With his last pistol, firing and striking the Jedi across the back and shoulder with two bolts. Wait. But Terandor's keen eyes caught the odd refraction of his weapon's energy discharge as they neared the foul enemy knight. The light split and weakening as a psychic shield of some kind oh, psychic shield. his attack. 
Nonetheless, the Jedi jerked when struck, his robes catching fire and Have the smell of burnt other flesh people with psychic the cold, shields? damp air. Yet, it was not enough to bring the man down, and he finished his recovery spin, tossing off his brown robe to Axis. reveal the blaster plates he wore underneath, sizzling and glowing in two places where he had been struck. Infuriatingly, his grin only grew wider as he eyed the Inquisitor and the Commissar, both of whom had begun to spread out to either side, drawing his attention apart. Time was on the Jedi's side, and both Imperials knew it. All around, the three combatants, the maddened clones, and newly arrived Jedi Knights were cutting back Terrandor survivors with merciless hate. Wait. Oh! Oh, that's the part I didn't get. Time is on the Jedi's side because Tarandor's forces, and by extension, Wyler's forces, because apparently, sure, why not? It's not just the Empire versus, sorry, the Imperium versus not the Empire yet. Still Republic, gotta remember that, even though I forget every time. It's the crazy clones, which is why they're being depicted with corn axes right now. Versus everyone, and everyone happens to encompass the Jedi and the remaining, let's go with slightly more loyal people in the Imperium. <laughs> so it's basically splitting up two of the Star Wars side versus one of the Imperium, but the Imperium's outnumbered, so both are cutting into it. Yeah. Although, it said like each other, so does that mean the clones were also trying to cut into the Jedi? If they're insane, I kind of believe that might be the case. Also, hey, Zeo Dragon, thanks for dropping in, man, and why are you saying revenge will be yours? All right, Eula. If Terrandor and Tarwa did not end the fight very soon, it would almost certainly not remain a three-person affair. Something the Jedi before them seemed to know as well. Time is as on he side. took his time Which reaching weird, behind his Pyler back was able to and cut drawing out a earlier. second weapon. A blaster pistol. He probably doesn't want to All reveal right. a lot of his things. Then. Let's get fracking serious. He said, and. Fracking? I thought that was a Battlestar Galactica phrase, not Star Wars. Maybe I'm just missing something. Also, Xeno Dragon, thank you. How's her Honkai Star Rail Firefly depression going? Honestly, I don't think she's dead. She popped differently than the other person we saw die, and she, something about her just seems odd. Plus, Mihoyo is really good at making a death count and hurt more, so if it goes too fast, I don't believe it's real. And as if on cue, the two Imperials attacked, driving in from opposite sides. Tar hmm. was delayed, ducking to the left and right as the Jedi Quinlan Voss crossed oh. his blaster-wielding arm over and fired several shots in his direction. The bolts were easy enough to dodge, but doing so was raw agony, and succeeded in slowing injured, yeah. the wounded Inquisitor long enough for Voss to meet blade to blade. In other words, a lucky hit once does more. actually change the tide. Terrandor charged while firing his battle last damage was hurt, burning, searing shots, drawing brief red lines in the enervating air. Oh. But he only managed to fire three times before the Jedi's lightsaber sent the last bolt careening back. The shot went because right they can up deflect, the barrel yeah. of Terrandor's weapon, causing it to detonate in his hand. The Commissar bellowed his agony oh. and fury, tossing the wasted scraps that were left of his gun from his now burnt and broken hand. But still having a hand. His opponent as he bore his chainsword high for an overhead swing. The dreaded Jedi wove around the scrapped weapon and locked his saber with the Commissar's chain blade once more, this but. time braced for the impact. The two so can fight against it. sword squealed and whined. Its adamantium bar is beginning to glow like dragon's teeth as they struggle to grind against the lightsaber's flaring and Oh, so even though it can hold up to it, it's not permanently holding up to it. It's holding up to it like some of the more endurable materials in the Star Wars side, which is slow cutting, but still cutting. Energy field. They seemed locked for a precious couple of seconds. But if he holds it long enough, Voss the sword will ripped. eventually melt, probably. A wicked probably. flashing of his teeth as he aimed into the Commissar with his blaster. Terrandor bore his own teeth in a grimace and prepared himself, grunting as he was shot twice. The bright, searing energy bolts smacking hard into his chest. Meanwhile, the Inquisitor was back on the approach. A fact the Jedi was well aware of. 
prepared to transform from his current lock with his transform? dying opponent to a re-engagement with the foul Imperial Superior. That is a unique choice of word. I mean, it's not a bad choice. I think he's meaning it, and by him I mean fan is meaning the word transform as he's going to shift from one stance to the next, but that's odd. I know I'm being nitpicky because I just seem to do that with a lot of fans work, but it's not bad. It works. It gets the point across, but I don't think the usage is completely correct there because what you're looking at is less a transformation, which is usually connotated by being physical to more of a philosophical stance of how he's doing one action to how he's doing a different one. It's not bad. I, I'm again, I'm being pandantic here, but it does really highlight that it doesn't quite fit the connotation he's going for. Again, if this was actually something that wasn't published yet and this is feedback, this would be eh, maybe choose a different word, but don't. If you don't, it's not a big deal. No one cares. And that's basically what I'm doing right now. This is me just going in and saying it's not ideal word choice, but mostly because the hand doesn't really have things I can nitpick and tear apart because he's a very competent writer. But to his shock, Terrandor did not weaken. The burned holes in his red uniform revealing the cracked and blistered Armor. surface of Ceramite underplating. Ooh. The Jedi scowled, making to shoot him again, but was forced to abandon the act and fire in Commissars the other have more wounds, man. in a last attempt to drive the Inquisitor off again. The black cloaked Imperial shivered through the air like a phantom. Ducking and dodging the shots his enemy sent. Shivered? Oh, even probably as jerking blood back dripped from between his shark like hmm. teeth. Voss was barely able to keep him at bay, taking careful shots, trying to wear him down, drive the Inquisitor into a mistake. But in doing that, he made a mistake of his own, oh? focusing too much on Tarweiler's encroaching form and not on the Commissar who was still locked behind his saber's blade. Oh, this is about to go bad for him. On the one hand, you don't ignore a commissar. On the other hand, I don't think his threat recognition is on the wrong side here. Tarweiler is the bigger threat. Crazy psychic, definitely not a chaos sorcerer. And <laughs> why would you ever suggest that? Level of Inquisitor. You, he has the right threat in mind. But this other guy is definitely holding his own as being someone who can keep up. Also, Xeno Dragon, your Helldiver's... Wait, my Helldiver looks like a clone trooper, stormtrooper, and a robotic arm and leg. Wait, you can do robot arms in Helldivers? Oh, wow. You should stream. You will love Helldivers, too. Honestly, Zeno, I would love to. But also, I haven't really been up to streaming much. This is this and the last time I did a stream on Thursday are the biggest ones I've done in a while. And yeah, I realize we've only been doing this for 15 minutes. Yeah. Hey, Terrandor grit his teeth lifted a leg, and kicked hard into the inside cab of the man he was contending with. Dropping Voss to Ooh. one knee, all of a sudden, the Jedi there nearly his his end, then and there. He was almost Force caught by the back end of his own blade and the descending oh. teeth of the Commissar's chainsword. Using the Force and his own martial might to hold both blades above his head with one arm as he took less accurate shots at the Inquisitor. To get distance Seeing rather than to hit. denied to him, Tar extended his free hand out, curling his functioning fingers as he Here reached comes magic. his mind and found Voss's own. No fear, Jedi. No fear? He hissed, invading his thoughts with spiked barbs of terror and dread, samplings the of victims plant? who had suffered at the ends of Tarweiler's psychic mercies. Unable to this rotate his body or right. saber to engage the rhythms of Vapad, Quinlan Voss suddenly found himself tensing tightly across his entire body, sweat soaking his brow and stinging his eyes. And the stop is probably enough for this. The assault of the Inquisitor yep. with his mind alone. He's gonna have to stop and to deal with the that. grinding pressure of the Commissar's chainsword with one arm. Oh, he's still keeping up. It was too much and the Jedi was forced to drop his blaster after firing a few more inaccurate shots. Taking his saber in both hands and trying to keep his mind lucid as nightmares of all nature shredded themselves over his thoughts, bleeding into his sight like the traumatic memories of wars long fought. Were it not for his affinity for the dark side, Master Quinlan Voss would have met his untimely end already. 
kind of weird that the dark side is actually the part of the save team here, considering thematically not usually the case. And that's a theme that seems to be carrying through with a lot of how Fan is portraying it as well. As it was, he was barely holding on. Ah, oh, Jedi! Ah! Oh! The Inquisitor screeched. Is it all Jedi fall? Ah, oh, Jedi! Oh, ah! fall Jedi fall. The Inquisitor okay, that makes more sense. Screeched, laying on more of his power, and Voss found himself roaring in defiance as he was bent backward by the commissar above him, losing his balance slowly. And a Jedi How did you slowly fall, lose your balance? but not as they would have thought. What? All around them, the other Jedi fought, and from above, more descended. They're literally in falling down on them. Yeah, it's Ram raining Jedi. Coda, who fell upon Terrandor like a divine bolt of emerald oh. lightning. His burning green blade shearing through the Commissar's bicep in an instant. The chain now he's sword officially held disarmed. There, flying off wildly as its grounding force was literally cut away. Terrandor reeled, screaming out his pain and indignant rage. But he barely began to react <laughs> before Coda spun on his heel and mule kicked the commissar with a force enhanced blow. I, yeah, I don't know this shit. Sending Jedi. him sailing through the air and over the embankment. Voss wasted no time, spinning to his feet the instant the chainsword was <laughs> off of him. Shoulders and focusing rolling, now on saber turn. dervishing oh, in his hand as he assumed Weiler. the Vapad form and dispatched the dark technique which sought to break his mind. Inquisitor Tarweiler tried to retreat a step, but the but. surprise and effort of it caused his existing wound to flare, and he staggered instead, barely able to raise his rapier in time to intercept the Jedi. Okay, you can't see this, and I'm not going to get my hand close enough to show it, but I got goosebumps right now, man. <laughs> oh, dear God. And yeah, Zeno Dragon is raining men. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, uh, and D-King? Yes. Yes, I am early. I decided to start early because I didn't want to wait anymore. I got done with what I was doing prior, so I had time. And Ripoff said, Voss had a whole arc where he ended up actually falling to the dark side while undercover? Oh, I think I've heard about that, and I know there was something to do with Ventress involved, but I didn't get that far in the Clone Wars, so I tried to avoid a lot of spoilers. Which is weird, considering this happens at the end of Clone Wars, so it's nothing but spoilers. Sort of. Either way, though, this is so cool, man. But even that was not enough. Voss was smoldering mm -hmm. with his own lethal instincts, and as is he going to do stupid under the dark side influence? continued to flow through him, it fed into those old habits. Fuel Wait, not just that he's falling a bit right now because he's being fueled by the pad, and a definitely not chaos sorcerer's magic, which is mostly dark side, but less darkish, sort of more dark, but also less possessed. But what would it mean for him to fall or get close to the dark side when there's a bunch of essentially corrupted, I was going to say space marines, but corrupted clones running around? I don't know because um, that seems like it might be opening up him to things that are a lot closer than they would be to a Jedi to understand because distance in the warp doesn't matter and then the warp is basically the force in this version. I'm just wondering if that might be a bad idea to use the dark side around them. Yeah, maybe the not. power of his strikes and the directness of his approach. He slapped the rapier out of Tarweiler's hand. That is a weird face. Such was the strike the Inquisitor barely detected, rearing as the Jedi continued to spin. But the sword wielding witch did not bring his saber in for a killing blow. Instead, Why? Quinlan Voss bit down on his darker thoughts and reached out with his offhand, seizing the Inquisitor by the throat and spinning him, slamming him by the neck into a nearby steel wall. Ooh. Tar gagged and choked, nearly all the breath being slammed out of him as he was pinned, his feet raised and held off the ground as the dark... I just want to clarify I heard this right. He clamped down on his darker thoughts and then just chucks someone neck first into a steel wall because that is the less dark option. I'll be honest. <coughs> Choking on my own tongue. I was kind of expecting that to be the darker option where killing was the more light side option. Oh, don't worry. I'll give you a nice clean death as opposed to let's make it hurt. 
I gain the distinct impression for Voss, at least in how fans portraying him, him being corrupted and him being on the light side are not very separated, are they? Dark Jedi constricted his airway, grinning darkly for a moment before softening his grip. You are now a prisoner of the Galactic Republic. Oh, why are you Behave doing that? or I'll have to whittle down the number of limbs you have to help make you manageable. Uh, no. I mean, I just that yeah. Prisoners who don't need weapons to be deadly, such as having a functioning mind, like psychic-powered prisoners, you, 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 unless you have a way to block them, which I don't think they are aware of. Well, I think they are aware of ways, but they're more mystically inclined, as opposed to actual blanks and nulls. <sighs> Also, and Ripoff is saying that wasn't a force choke. That was actually physically slamming into a wall with his hand. Oh, that's actually even more crazy. Neat. This seems like he's making a mistake. Do you understand? Asked Quinlan Vos. Is he going to start laughing? His hand relaxing enough for Tar Weiler to give his answer. The Inquisitor quirked his bloody lips. Laugh. Mercy. At a time like this... Would wonders and fools never cease? I understand. He hissed. Good. Then let's find a place to... Voss began to say, I understand that you are a fool, Master yeah. Jedi. You should have killed me when you had the chance. Yeah! The Inquisitor added with a rasping laugh. I still may, if you try anything. The Jedi warned, bringing his saber up to Tar's neck. Oh, I need not try anything more than words. I'm assuming he's going to say something to his pet demon host, huh? Said the Inquisitor, and at that, Voss quirked his eyebrows. Words? And what do you imagine you can say right now that will have that effect? A key phrase? The Jedi asked, in response... The Inquisitor smiled grimly and said, Jackal! In response Jackal? to the single utterance, the air seemed to still, and a voice which sounded faint, yet all present, spoke yep. in their ears. Yes, Master. <sighs> it said, the speaking voice being the definition of inhuman, like the shaped manipulated sound of millions of animals being slaughtered edited to resemble a speaking voice quinlan felt his blood freezing in his veins but it was already too late oh he did i unleash you said the inquisitor oh that is not the phrase i was i was hoping it would be something like kill the enemy or destroy this person no 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 that's unleash can he release him in his current state? All signs point to probably not. So we now have an unsealed demon. Lovely. Last. Responded the creature who stood just behind Quinlan Voss. Oh, no. Its clawed hand reaching oh, no. to obscure half of his Chaos face. Control, indeed, you know. The clear sky darkened as a new storm front began to rise. But the clouds coalescing in the heavens Spun. were born of nothing natural. Red, How powerful like is the, the demon this body is inhabiting? Flowing, and the blood which would body. soon flow. They spun out in languid spirals, oh, this is not devouring good. portions of the burning sky with lazy crimson coils. And from the sanguine shadow of these growing storms rose the end. Are we seeing its actual... And they're moving away! Oh yeah, Ayla's still alive. I forgot about that. For some reason, I thought she just kind of put on a bus. I guess Fen didn't do that, though. On times rhymes with war crimes, Matthew? Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, it does. And this is the right setting for it. Take those roof accesses. There and there. 
They should be at a proper angle to allow our troopers to provide fire support to our forces on the main road, said Ayla, walking as she gestured towards the intended locations. Oh, they're yes, setting sir. up an attack. Said the clone captain at her side, saluting sharply before veering away to organize his men. Combine what's left of Commando Squads Delta and Iowa, and get them situated up here with sniper configurations. I need them killing Imperial commanders, and I need it done ten minutes ago. Ayla said as she came to the railing overlooking a particular stretch of the raging battle below them. Aye, ma'am. I'm on it. Oh, the battle's Affirmed still going on. The clone commander she had been addressing. I guess she's a crisp just running salute, more which was completely control. at odds with his blackened armor and bloody helmet. Damn. Ayla gave no more than a nod as Is the man one of the characters departed, we know? Too that sounds like specific damage. The battlefield. Juggernauts dueled and danced to the best of their ability around the behemoth tank of the Imperials. All while ATTEs and the smaller mainline vehicles squared off against one another, blowing each other to pieces as often as not. I know it's kind of silly to say this, but right now all I'm thinking is, I just really want to see whatever the hell is going on in better detail. Because I can see the tanks here, but tank battles are cool, man. I mean, in real life, they're actually much faster and further distance. But here they're up close. It's like, <laughs> I have bigger armor. I have bigger armor. I'm going to run over you. I'm not sure if that will happen yet, but that would be kind of cool if it did. And between the treads, wheels, and metal legs of the technological war beasts flowed a river of bodies. Alive Pineapple and pizza. dead. Oh God, you know. Fighting, dying, can't be and done being well. trampled Literally. in the press. From the direction of the attacking Republic, the tide was white, uniform, and bravely bellowing war cries as they marched on for the fate of the greater galaxy. Huh. And that pale rapid was met by a darker one, composed of the rubberized suits of the relatively new Imperial soldiers. They fought silently, each one seeming nearly identical to the really? next, thanks to silent? their all-encompassing armors. I didn't armors. think the troopers or the clones they were that silent. They rarely made any noise as they fought and died. Dread parodies of the clones they faced off against. Oh, oh, sorry, when I heard, like, one-on-one -on -one fighting and dying. I was like, wait, is that the clones? Although, for all I know, it actually might be clones as well. Every now and again, you have that. For example, Creek, at least, is how it's being put forward by fan. In lore, it's kind of probably clones, but is it really? The answer is, depends on the author. So it's literally the... Oh, I forgot the name. It's one of the fan-made... <laughs> Sorry, I, I just amused myself with an unintentional pun. The Legion... Army? Let's go with the army made by Fan. So Fan made. That was based, I think it was the Carcosan Immortals. I could be mistaken. But, and the chatter is right now talking about pineapple on pizza when it's done right. When it's done right, it's awesome. Every other time, not so much. Uh, <laughs> dude. Yeah, these are the Carcosan Immortals who were doing the burning and, what was that, stonification? No, nah, just carbonizing because of all the flamethrowers, yeah. They were armed with an incredible variety of weapons, from All their should be standard destroyed. high intensity laser rifles to flamethrowers, similar mag. They're talking about las guns, aren't they? High intensity laser rifles. Oh, it's the Untouchables, Carcosa and Untouchables. Ah, thanks. I mean, uh, it... I get. In lore, fans making the right choice here. And I don't think he's making a single mistake. And everything he said is perfectly accurate for how the clones would perceive a laser rifle, which is basically a flashlight. I mean, a LAS gun. But for someone who plays 40k and you hear LAS gun, you think, oh, cool, easy saves. It's such a disconnect when you have to remember, oh, yeah, they're weak now because everything else is dead that wouldn't find it weak. And that's kind of how 40k works. Uh, and even if they're hotshot lasses, I wouldn't be surprised if they are. But even then, they're not that much more powerful. Uh, <laughs> it's and just insane, man. And melee weapons of all kinds. Interspersed between them were the tall forms of the powerful Imperial fanatics. The all-female cultists doing more than merely battling alongside the Have other they pulled any more miracles forces. Yet? 
they seemingly inspired even the blank-faced foes to even greater feats of silent frenzy wherever they could be seen. How can you tell? Ayla bit her lips so tightly it bled. She kind of surprised she hasn't started dropping things on down them. There to intervene where they but that's probably not Ayla's thing because she's more Vapad style, which is more melee based. So she's not really going to go into the full force. Hey, here's a giant rock. All rocks fall. Everyone dies. Admittedly, I mean, it would work. Dropping a building on someone and then picking it up and dropping it again and again and again like a giant hammer is a very effective strategy that a Jedi could pull off. Most won't because that level of force usage you don't think about. But it's possible. A la Starkiller dragging a... I was going to say Death Star, but I don't think they got that big. What was it? A Star Destroyer from Orbit. Granted, that was a game. Although some of the later feats in the movies even did show up to that level. They were weakening in order to restore their forward movement towards the Basilica of Salvation. But even Ayla had her limits. With it. And as it was, she had been fighting for hours. She was covered in small wounds, cuts and burns earned by her continuous evasion of death's Only dogged small attempts ones, to seize her. How Jedi many man. more times could she expect to elude her fate? Yeah, at least one more. And even more pressingly, she was simply tired, entirely worn down. In fact, her Do they have every back muscle her twitched and ached, Probably pushed not. far, far over her limit, even when factoring in her powers with the Force. The Twi'lek Jedi Master needed to rest to recover her strength. Oh shit! Did Van actually commission someone to do art of this? Or is this something that just existed and I never knew about it before? Because goddamn. Oh, and it's the old... No, this had to predate it because these are the old school versions of the sisters where they had the flames on the back as the standard option. They don't have that in any of the new ones unless there's a model I just haven't seen. So this is older art. Oh, cool. But for every second she took unless for it's herself, just something tens or got hundreds to do in... of clones yeah, whatever. she could have saved died. And their forward line was stalled Still ever cool faster. Image. Numbers were no longer on her side. A fact she could see with terrifying clarity from her high perch. The 327th were on their last legs. And those Attrition. legs were shaking. Almost breaking against the tide of Imperial wrath. They needed her. But she would be less than useless if she died. She gripped the handrail of the skyscraper's roof. Arms trembling, legs leadened. Did she even have strength enough left in her to leap over this meager barrier and summon the force needed to slow her fall as she came to their aid? She needed Shakti. She needed Master Quinlan Voss. They might be busy. To help her carry the absurd burden which now fell fully onto her shoulders. But there was no one. He's Commander 65 I don't had ceased all communications, and the reports from the occupied Imperial support base confirmed that Commander Bly had been killed in action by an Imperial war machine. Oh! She dared not recall that force and allow any more Imperial death dealing. Commander Bly. He was probably the one where they unleashed the knight, right? Unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, I'm terrible at names, so I could be very mistaken. If I'm right, though, so. I don't know how big a battlefield this is because while they have the entire world and the space aspect to play on, it seems like they're focusing around this specific city. I'm wondering if the unleashing of the demon host would be enough for the storm to be visible to others. It would be a good way to show, hey, Hobbit, something, man. But if they show the storm, that'd be a good way to show where the scenes are lining up because Fan doesn't always write these chronological. Sometimes they're a little earlier, sometimes they're a little before, a little after. And then they're close, but never quite matching. It's no one-to-one -one chronology here. Hmm. So maybe they're just out of contact, but not dead yet. Contraptions to escape. But without them, what was now on the field was all she had left. Mm -hmm. And if nothing was done to shift the tempo and of the ongoing is more battle, of an imperial tactic. it would leave her forces too mauled and depleted to actually breach the Basilica once they reached it. All in all, Have you tried magic? beginning to look extremely bleak. Mm. And yet, this was only the beginning of the oh, darkness which Ayla now yep. had to face. 
a fact that revealed itself with horrific suddenness by the sounding of a titanic roar. Her eyes oh, the were night is actually running away in. from the dueling tanks and the frenzied <laughs> soldiers who poured around between and over their hulls. Yeah, they're fucked. There, approaching with a loping, thundering gait, was the description of the war engine her clones had reported to her. It was half as tall as a juggernaut and carried on massive juggernaut? metal legs. But this, this was no ATTE or anything similar. Apart from Kubik. It was it red, so cool. covered in seals of paper, and bearing its name upon a massive banner of imperial script hung under a heraldic shield, as if in reference Dude. to the Jedi Knights of old. It was the fastest, large-sized, all-terrain vehicle she had ever seen, and its initial charge took it into the side of one of her own walkers. The ATTE oh. being flipped clean onto Dude. its flank by the sheer force of the tackle. It followed this up by aiming its enormous arm mounted weapon into the walker tank's belly, unloading a utilating torrent of energy which tore the Republic War Machine into molten pieces in mere seconds. <laughs> I am having such a geek out moment right now because freaking giant tank is being torn apart by a freaking giant knight and just. I'm getting Ava vibes so hard just because they're running in, they flip the tank, they're shoving the gun into it, they're blowing it to pieces. This is what I wish a video game involving knights would look like. Just full on mayhem. A juggernaut came in immediate answer, driving full force into the new target, ramming the bipedal monster with its own even larger frame. By use of its larger size and advanced speed, the clone turbo tank was attempting to flatten the Imperial War Machine under its ten oversized metal tires. But... But the charge was blunted and temporarily halted by a flashing me. sphere of energy which surrounded the walker. Oh, the shield. Some kind of powerful shield. Void shield, yeah. It bought the adversary enough time for it to swing its free hand towards the juggernaut. Revealing that this digited hand without a gun was, in fact, not free at all, but a potent and designed weapon all of oh, its own. that's a size own. difference? Wow. The blocky fingers of that flat, sparking fist closed as it punched the front of the charging turbo tank, releasing an incredible discharge of energy as it made contact with the superconductive armor which sheathed the juggernaut. That armor was designed to take heat and energy and disperse it harmlessly across the entire breadth of the vehicle. And it but they're now dealing with something that's cutting through so it can't disperse it properly. But for most conventional weapons in Star Wars, this is almost unstoppable armor because that's exactly how most weapons work. You disperse the energy so it doesn't actually affect anyone on the big enough side. Okay. Dude. And if it makes an opening, they have a gun to shove into the hole. Ingenious design for rendering blaster-based weaponry ineffective against but... it. But... But the power fist of the Imperial Knight was nothing not like based. such weapons. Well, it's power-based. And its power field was made to be highly concentrated and to bear enough armor-piercing destructive capacity to pulverize a warship's hull, provided that the ship had no void shielding to deflect it. That power struck the surface of the Republic vehicle, and, and instead of merely shields. destroying only what it came in contact with, its energy was siphoned out and spread across the entire skin of the tank. Oh, seriously? So the tank is actually still doing its job right, but it's having a power interaction I wasn't expecting. I thought it would just cut through it because it wasn't expecting it, but no, 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 no. This is way worse. It's still accurately siphoning it off. But the power field is what's destroying it, and they're spreading the tank. Oh, it's going to just detonate, isn't it? The vehicle flashed, <laughs> the thickest lines of its armor glowing bright orange and red. The coloring the spreading keep the like power up rotting sores of burgeoning sunlight over its entire carapace. Until it's the tank's itself. internal stores of Tabana gas reached critical heat and detonated ferociously. The blast flattened any soldiers caught near it. Throwing Imperials and clones aside in a sudden the cascade night. of burnt bodies and rent armor. And striding from the wreckage, its blue ionic shield still flaring in a corona of shields, Azure man. Aegis, the nightly walker roared mechanically. 
<laughs> announcing its brutal victory and beginning its charge to the next. That was where Ayla was needed, and soon she began to prepare herself. Wait, is Ayla running in to actually fight a knight one on one? Oh, yeah, she did. I mean, I might still hold out hope that Shock T lives because we only saw damaged pieces, so she's probably dead, but Fan could easily just hand wave it away and say she was recovered from the ruins later after the people moved on. But, yeah, no, you, you don't survive meleeing a knight unless you happen to be an ultramarine because plot armor. God damn. And Ripoff says that's canonically something that happens in Star Wars and requires capital ship level firepower. Damn. That's so cool. Breathing in and out in a careful, ritualized way. That walker alone would not make the difference. It couldn't. I don't know. She would stop it. it seems like and she's uh, not going to do well. Perhaps she could have had the Imperial War Machine been alone. What? But as her eyes What's adjusted behind it? and moved up beyond the outright spectacle of the night, she saw something new and debatably far more terrible. What? A screaming, singing stream of warrior fanatics, much like the ones who had already taken to the field. Seraphim descend, far, man. Or Seraphim. Far more numerous than before. The vast majority were not clad in the powerful war suits used by those she had already seen. Oh? But rather wore more standard combat equipment their faces covered in metallic masks bearing the enraged visage of the same female saint of their insane religion. Leading this horde eh, of more common wrong. troops were the organized but no less frenzied ranks of the taller, battle-armored sisters of war that Ayla had already been contending with. And though they were not the bulk of the new army, There's they a were lot of still them. far more numerous than the existing fanatics who had laid waste to her forces on the battlefield. And far more terribly still, she saw that there was a unique figure at their head. A towering, striding warrior whose flowing, leaping steps brought them far ahead of their leading That ranks. would be the Candace and the power From armor, the right? Not power armor. armor and body, Outside armor? surmised the Imperial was a female fanatic like all the others around her. Accurate. But her face bore no feminine mask. Instead, her golden helm was in the shape of a long-haired man, his eyes closed, his face serene, but marred by the slightest tinge of subtle rage. Wait, she's wearing the mask of the Emperor? I mean, I know they're saying she's a saint and she has direct blessing from the Emperor, but I was not expecting anyone to be allowed to wear his face. You know, actually, if there was anyone else, I think they would be killed on the spot by their allies. That is, um... Damn. Yeah, I know. Out of everything that happens, that's the one that surprises me. Ayla hardly oh, needed to enhance shit, her man. senses with the Force to see that this mask represented one thing, one figure in their pantheon of madness. I mean, this there's only one person in their pantheon. the face of the so-called... God Emperor of Mankind. <sighs> and as the fanatic bit outdated. waded into He's the aged. battle, the effect on the morale the of the Imperials skin. around her spoke volumes of its own. She literally in runs into battle with the eyes of the Emperor in, in his song, face. In elation and in choirs of wrath as their efforts redoubled or tripled. The wounded rose, light ablaze in their eyes, songs of fire carried on their bloodied lips. And here's the miracles. And the weakened and tired Literally found healing new, through faith. greater strength with the arrival of these faithful reinforcements. Magic. With a sliding, sickening terror, Ayla realized that the battle was irretrievable. Yeah. She could not make a difference large enough to turn back that kind of force. And she watched the lines of her own forces ignite and curl so you away fight and from the assault this thing. of these new but... fanatics. There was only one thing she could do now. Die? Field commanders, can you read me? Ayla said, tapping her comm piece. 
Prepare to begin an organized retreat back to the landing zones. The 33rd Vanguard, the 12th Armored Division, and everything that's left of Assault Forces 22 and 80 will join me at the front. We will buy you time for a staggered withdrawal. We have no- Okay, so she's not pulling back for herself to survive. She's sacrificing herself to let the better portion of the army that's probably in better shape survive. Well, at least she's not going down like a bitch. No choice but to... She began to say before another voice interjected across her car oh? and waylaid her commands. Belay those orders. Stand by for reinforcements, troopers. Who's speaking? Hold fast. You are the shield of the Republic, and we have not abandoned you. What? General Windu, out. What? The words made Ayla's breath catch in her throat. But I... Just, what? How? I don't... What? I thought he was a bit busy at the moment. Okay, was not expecting this. And she spun around in reaction, turning and shading her eyes as she saw what the battle below had distracted her from noticing. Hundreds upon hundreds of claw-shaped boarding pods were hovering down. Landing because the fight in the, the sky is more or less done, yeah. And releasing their cargo. The many surviving members of the Jedi Order's boarding fleet emerging. She were saw many? right away that there were many dead and wounded, but saw also that most of the Jedi present, though bearing new scars and many injuries, were still standing and ready to continue the fight. Master With new resolve, you could say. And Master Mace Windu were among the first to emerge, approaching her right away. Ayla turned, pushing off from the railing, but staggering to one knee a moment later, head spinning. She soon found their hands helping to pull her up, and she could not help but smile yeah. into their faces, even as she struggled to keep her feet. You came. Thank the Force. Were you successful? She asked not with touching great that one. elation. Not touching that one. Mostly successful, said Master Obi-Wan. The ship is largely disabled, and we've captured several assets. Three Imperial aliens known as Navigators. Several members of their ship crew. <laughs> I'm sorry, that is actually the funniest way they could possibly describe that. Also, I just know someone has a double lightsaber here. That is stupid. But more importantly, just describing them as Imperial aliens. Because, like, yes, they're officially sanctioned mutants. Which is just hilarious to me, because describing them as an alien to anyone in the Imperium, if they ever find out that's how they consider navigators, that is a bigger insult than anything they can imagine. And I absolutely hope that at some point, at some point, it comes out that that's how they're describing all the aliens that work for the Imperium, because that is just so much worse than any insult they can think of on their own. It's like, oh yeah, you have all these aliens working for you. Oh... <laughs> Uh, little things like that, where from their perspective, it makes perfect sense. Well, they have a slight physiological difference. They're definitely an alien, not just a mutation. Because that's not really something that comes up all that often in Star Wars. More often than not, it's just, hey, here's the species. They look this way. It's a thing. And given time, it probably would become that way in Star Wars, or sorry, not Star Wars, 40K, but it, it isn't given that time, and they're very heavily controlled. Officers among them. And the body of they a gave up space the order marine the librarian. Plan side, Matthew? Yep. Supplied Mace Windu. Librarian? She asked with a quirk Wait, of her head. Part. Supplied Mace Windu. Library of a space marine librarian. Supplied Mace yep. Windu. Librarian? As far as I know, there's only she the one asked here. With a quirk of her head. Don't think there was anything on the planet, I'll but I could be mistaken. Later. What's the situation here? Asked the burned champion of their order. Grim. Ayla answered without hesitation. Our artillery support has been completely cut off, and I have been unable to receive updates from the force deployed to protect the sniper tanks. Currently, it seems they were wiped out. The secondary yep. force is holding the Imperial support base successfully, but I dare not pull them away and allow more war machines to escape those bays. Commander Bly is... gone. The Jedi sent to destroy the Imperial Planetary HQ have yet to rejoin with me, though the last time I checked, they had been largely successful in their own missions. And what about Master Shakti? Missing. Was her mission successful? Asked Master Obi-Wan. And okay, you said no Ayla Grimmest, look like humans? Yeah, looking away. 
the Imperial response to our initial attack was entirely thrown off, so I assume that she was at least initially successful. But I have not seen Had or a heard bit of from a run her since later. the battle commenced. I, I fear the worst. We managed to fight and grind our way to this point of the approach. The Basilica is less than a kilometer away now. But the Imperial defense has been reinforced, and their heavy army support and advanced shock infantry are stalling and pushing us back. Casualties for the 327th have reached anywhere between 40 to 60 percent, and they are mounting fast. We need to get our sabers on the ground and start taking the brunt of this assault off of my men. She reported What's with no small sense of urgency. No, said Master Windu. What? No. What's no he going to do? Ayla asked back, confused. We will handle this. We have almost 1,500 Jedi left ready to fight. Oh, really? There was 2,000-ish that dropped initially. I'm kind of surprised they only lost a fourth. Because not everyone was in the group that ran into the Space Marine Librarian. So even though he cut through a lot of them, it was dozens, multiple dozens, maybe even 50 to 100, not 500. So they lost a good amount everywhere else as well. Unless that first group he cleared out was a lot bigger than I thought, which is entirely possible. More than enough to turn the <sighs> tide without your help. You need to pull back and retire from this battle. I think he's the making Jedi a mistake. Master explained. I mean, with not her retiring, respect, though. She's spent. I can't. Ayla have to. said stiffly, Ayla, you can barely stand. We're grateful that you have carried the fight on your own for this long, but you are not alone anymore. Master Obi-Wan offered gently, but she shook her head to him as well. I've been fighting these Imperials for hours. I know them. I know what they are doing, and I cannot leave my troopers down there without my support. On the one hand, it's really admirable that she's going out here and fans really portraying her as someone who's headstrong but has her heart in the right place. So it's good. On the other hand, I like how he's showing the counterpoint by having Obi-Wan say, you're tired, you're barely able to stand, and not saying because it's Obi-Wan who is coming from, but it makes sense to say, you are going to be dead weight because you are going to die and then be a weight we have to carry back. He's not saying that flat out, but it's very much implied by the Everything she said prior to them arriving about how she can barely jump across the span from one thing to the next. Yeah, just I'm surprised they had so many Jedi left. I was under the impression a lot more died. I can't. I've already lost Commander Bly. She said, breath catching as the reality of that loss struck her. I wonder if Bly was the one who shot her down in cannon. Obi-Wan looked almost stricken. And Mace softened his face, extending a hand out to grab her shoulder, holding it firmly. Then there is something else you can do to help. Something that won't include needlessly putting your own life in danger. Take Aquila Squad and go what? find Master Quinlan Voss and Master Ram Coda. Help them finish- Oh, Sending an exhausted Jedi to what you think is a- Simple mission. Uh, they're dead. They are so dead. Ayla, it, this isn't putting Ayla on a bus. This is putting Ayla in a coffin and just seeing how far the coffin can be dropped into an empty hole that just goes on forever. Finish their objectives. And Unless she's going to the body and there's Jedi the back there. This way when you can. We need as many as possible. If, we're going if to they ain't already dead, Ayla's dead. And crush their final defense. Do you understand? Mace Unbound asked, demon. Ayla pausing before firming her resolve and giving him a short nod. Good. Then I won't delay you any longer. Rest while you can, and take a hefty escort of gunships with you. You may need them to help ferry the rest of the order here faster. Or Windu to ram added, someone and blow up. That might help. a reassuring squeeze before letting her go and turning away. Ayla took off the instant she could, radioing the squad oh, so for dead. a pickup as she did. Obi-Wan watched after her and smirked wanly. Do you think that transit time will be long enough for her to catch her second wind? He asked Master Windu. Nope. Mace shook his head. More like her fifth or sixth wind at this point. <laughs> Probably after. No, I don't think Ayla will be of much use to us in a fight. Not for another day or so. If the demon is still around and hasn't ever, you know, killed Voss and everyone else, then yeah, she just got sent to her death and he's trying to be nice about this, but he, he yeah, we know how this is going. But if Voss is the one that tells it to her, 
she will be much more likely to listen. I, I don't think he's going to be able to. The Jedi Order said as he strode to the railing she had been at before, staring down at the deteriorating battle. Oh, separate now, Jedi need. Master Kenobi, let us put the strength we saved from our assault on the ship to good use. Said they Master Windu, strength? resting his foot on the railing and drawing his right hand out to his side, pulling his belted saber into it with the call of the Force. Obi-Wan did much the same, drawing his own blade into his hand and then igniting it. A torrent of humming blue light <laughs> bursting from the pommel of his sacred weapon. All around them, the actions were paralleled as hundreds of warrior monks drew their weapons, igniting their fangs of light ten by ten. Jedi Knights of the Republic, Mace called, raising his amethyst blade of light. To battle! God damn, man. it's, oh, it's only 1.30? Nice, I have plenty of time. I was actually wondering if I went too long, but no, this is awesome. Oh, this is so cool, because like right now we're setting up what's probably going to be an amazing battle, either in this episode or a later one, which would suck. But it's not just we have the Jedi on one side, we have the Jedi on one side coming down from orbit after a devastating loss, but one where they realize just how powerful the Imperium could be if they have access to magic things, versus official saint knight and a bunch of crazy assholes and i'm honestly not sure if that would be the sisters or the carcosan because either way that could be really dangerous so it's a very good matchup but it very much feels like a hero hammer army but where you have an actual army worth of them versus a very competent force with really good heavies and very strong but not too many models that are just kind of insane Essentially, an army that would probably win versus the Hero Hammer because Hero Hammer just never seems to be good, but would look cool. Or playing custodies. Honestly, put them in armor, it probably works out about the same. So, what's Fan got planned for the intermission? Also, I touched my glasses. Ugh, no wonder I couldn't see out of them. Yoink. I can barely. Hello again, everyone. Time for another Q&A session. Take a break if you need to stretch out those legs. Get a snack or a drink or both and check out these cool facts. I wonder if they're going to be real facts or just random things he put out. Whoa, I can actually see out of these now. Better. Whoa, when did this image come out? Is the pride of the Corps the only mandator to within the Republic Navy? Or are there others? Were there seven of them? Also, why does it have text on it? Yeah, it probably just look cool. Answer, the pride of the core is one of five Mandator II Dreadnought-class vessels currently in existence through none are technically currently under direct Republic command? Wait. They're not under Republic command. Duh? I was not aware of that. Oh, that's what this full image looks like? I've only seen the zoomed in. I think I remember you saying that Orion was 700 or more years old, correct? But I also, ah, no, don't you dare phase up. Also heard mention in one episode that he was a veteran of the Death Watch. So how many years of service did he spend with them? Enough. Orion spent 212 years as a member of the Death Watch, and for a time it seemed extremely unlikely that he would actually return to his chapter. He did. However, eventually they returned home and was appointed Chapter Master shortly thereafter. Huh. I kind of wonder if he has alternate armor with the Death Watch shield still on the side. Will you be willing to record and post your Discord after chats? Wait, he does after chats on Discord? Oh, well, that's kind of cool. So Hobbit said, aren't they under KDY command? KDY, KDY. I know I've seen that abbreviation. I'm assuming that's for the ships, but I don't remember. And Ripoff, you said a hero hammer or blob of heroes was called a Death Star. Yeah, and that is um, incredibly ironic. I love playing it that way, though. It's probably why I like Custodes. Especially since with how it works right now, you literally surround a character Kuat Drive Yards, that's what it is, Hobbit? Okay, that makes sense. <sighs> that's still really cool, though. Hero Hammer's fun. It's bad, but it's fun. 
moment, my Discord after chats are sort of off the cuff and reverently low. Uh, social media Discord included. So he has them, but they're not entirely polished. Uh, makes sense. Whoa, Men of Iron? Will we see the tempered hands before the end of season one? Answer? Yes. Oh, how long was season one? Because I thought that big ass episode earlier on was the end of it, but. Fire the Urza's claws! How did the proud heretic asks? You said that Zect. Zectech sector, that is a word, fleet have a lot of old ships. Do they have Ursus claws? Oh my god. They probably put out a commission considering correlations to traitors. While none of the battle fleet Zectech are equipped with such a barbaric weapon, the Crimson Razors do still maintain a very similar weapon aboard their fortress monastery, the Black Crim the Black Crimson. My god, they are such a edgelord chapter. It's called the Bloody Barb. I know Fan is building up the Crimson Razors as the antagonistic faction within the 40k side, and frankly, they're good at it. But dear god, he is making them almost a parody, which... It's actually kind of fitting for 40k where a lot of it is so over the top you just have to roll with it or you're laughing because of how much over the top it becomes. Ugh. Lunch the same way as the Ursus Claws. I have no idea what the background music is either, so I've... For all I know, it could be something. And we got next. Dude, the art he has for this is so cool. Since the Jedi were able to retrieve the body of a librarian, would it be possible for Kamino, or any other cloning group, to create a clone using the DNA of a librarian thus making a possible counter to the Space Marines? I mean, Fabius, sorry, Fabulous Bill did manage to do that, and but that's Fabulous Bill, so that that's a little more than Kuat might be capable of. Sorry, not Kuat, Kamino. On the other hand, Kamino's really good at fucking shit up. And a bunch of clone space marines sounds like it wouldn't be a problem at all. That's never been a trouble problem. Also, can you clone the parts of their genetics that were brought in as well? I don't know. Considering a lot of the stuff that makes a space marine a space marine aren't actually part of their body, they're implants. I don't think their genetics would encode that. Although it might, considering the process of becoming a space marine for the... I was going to say Blood Ravens, but that's where my mind went. Sanguinius's Legion and later chapters do change people over by just putting them in a coffin and giving them the blood. The, everything else is taken care of that way. So it's not impossible that the various organs could just grow in on their own. Hmm. It's the Lord of the Rings song? Oh, Okay. Remix of Misty Mountains. Oh, it's been so long since I've seen that. I also never saw the second and third of those series. Never really got the time to it. Need to get around to that someday. Uh. Answer. What goes into the creation of a space marine is far, far more than mere natural genetics. If they took the DNA sample from a space marine and cloned it, they would not get a fully formed space marine. Gene seed is an arcane as it is scientific. Yeah. Yeah. But the weekend is probably closer to a Space Marine Scout at that point. Which is still pretty impressive. But the magic -y stuff is in there. On the other hand, they might get a Librarian. Space Marine Scout access to Psyker powers? That doesn't sound like it'd be a problem at all. I'm out of tea. Oh well. Ooh, cool art. This is a big question. The Imperium's move to decapitate the Confederacy was an astounding success, but I've noticed something weird about it. The mission stated from Raxus, oh, this is hard to read because of the font he's using, from Raxus, and on the greatest extent we have seen, they went to the opposite end of the galaxy at Hypori. The issue is travel time. Warp travel isn't slow, but is still a lot longer from the crust. Massive distances are just how fast can the Imperium travel? Based on episode 31, it sounded like it was at least a week for them to travel from Raxus to Hypori. Is this correct? Ooh, this one I know. Uh, basically, without things trying to eat them in the warp, the travel time is 
Where is it? Okay, we're there. The where is it part is the thing holding them up right now. The part that slows them down in the space, or sorry, I was going to say space marines, I, that sounds weird. The 40k universe is less, here's A, B, and we got to move there. It's more, here's point A, between that and point B, while it is faster than going in real space, demons will try and eat you. And the gods will intentionally fuck you up to make it so you get where you need in the least possibly useful way possible. Because that's a possibility, even. Yeah. The warp is literally just, we're going to fuck with you, but be just useful enough you don't stop using us. Basically like using Comcast. Just slightly less dickish. I wonder what Fen's answer is going to be when he gets to this one. Warp travel is extremely unstable, but is generally much slower than hyperspace. As shown, Davik had already completed his own personal conquest of Utapau long before he received any messages from Hypori. Grievous had an ample time and warning before they reached him. I mean, generally, yes, but also that would apply to one world to the other. It's kind of been pointed out that Space Marines here, without anyone trying to eat them, is a lot faster though unless that's something that was changed up and then not entirely addressed by fan i could be mistaken cool art though hope you enjoy those to have your own questions added to the next video just leave them in the q a section of my discord link it will be in the description down below I wonder if i should drop a question in. maybe when i catch up and Agent IQ. So trying to clone a librarian would just be a huge disappointment. Yes, but how much could be interesting? I mean, if they just make psychic bombs, that would still probably be something that could mean to my value. And now, without further ado, let us continue with the story. It is my pleasure to resume the telling of the Heralds of the End. Please enjoy. I don't know why, but when I read in fans' voice, I go super dramatic like this. If that sounds like him, I am so sorry. Considering I've actually heard his voice, yeah, I mean, we've been hearing his voice. Oh, we're going to Shadrach. Really? I honestly thought he was out of the story at this point. Oh. Huh? The tall man stood in the enclosed space which had been his office, closing the case beside the cogitation interface screen and restraining a contemptuous sigh as he began to reach for the keys which would enable him to activate the final shutdown on his personal terminal. What? Standing off to his left and right were two men each, four in total, each members of his personal guard, trusted killers who belonged to his own staff. Behind him, imperceptibly sneering, was the clerical sister who had been issued to serve with him when he had first come into command of the Basilica of Salvation. A short and humiliating appointment where it should have been the propellant that sent him to the next level. In other words, he was given exactly what he wanted in such a way that no one would ever take it as an excess or a compliment. Yeah, that would do it. And worst of all, Commissar Shadrick knew it would not end here. Yeah. That golden you pissed bitch off people above you. Her order of fanatics would take this whole situation up with his commanders. They may eat. Oh, she's going to die, isn't she? This is the biggest death flag I've seen so far. This isn't so much a death flag as how to put it. A giant pile of this guy's plotline only continues if there happens to be a sudden, oh no, the saint, the living saint, who is guaranteed to try and destroy me because I was in her way, but somehow is dead and didn't do it yet. Oh no, how horrible. It's That is what's happening here. And this asshole will just... If he was off screen, if he was dead, if he was just put on a bus and thrown out of the story because his role had been played, I could see that being a thing. But it very much feels like the Canoness's role was to be antagonistic to him. But now she doesn't have plot armor because it seems like her role is completed, so she might actually end up dying. I guess the Star Wars side has bigger chance than I thought. Even Dean to accuse him 
of heresy. But that a will go away if she dies. Well destroy him, even if proclaimed without proper substantiation. All of this simply the more powerful because get, the less they would you not need. allow him to complete his fated victory over Rajulia. The dead because Palatine, he's still losing. who even now haunted his every step. I kind of wonder if she comes back here, as a saint. He would be forced to leave, to depart to who knows where. The canoness had not clarified. The only absolute... It would be hilarious if he was sent over to Tatooine. Because there is another commissar there who probably would not appreciate his tactics. And it would be funny to me. Oh, man. Was that he could not remain. And so, defeated though he was, searing from within, he would do as he had been bid. And he would do so with the silent dignity of a man of the commissariat. Is that with dignity, though? Because I thought their entire big thing was, <laughs> bam, you dead. So is he just going to shoot people quietly instead? But he would not forget that much. He silently swore to himself as he prepared uh, I don't know his when departure. And it's Suddenly, die, but she's definitely a right chime back. sounded on his cogitator, just as his fingers were hovering above the final shutdown key. Oh? He paused, blinking as he looked down into the interface. A personal communication request was being sent to him over the Voxnet. Oh. The recipient was suspiciously marked as unknown. But when the commissar's Kinda eyes wilder, scanned maybe? over the words clearance level vermilion, he suddenly got a good impression of who color anyways? or what must be on the other side. I don't actually know. His mouth dried up and a rare pulse of true fear riddled and squirmed into his guts. Yep, that's Wyler. him like a corrupting serpent. The emotion boring into his own flesh with the same efficacy as that of a lethal parasite. He swallowed. Have you considered hard, leaving the planet? Fingers still hovering. It might be safer. Heart pounding like a drum in his ears. The chime continued to bleat, and in spite of the sudden desert like conditions within his mouth, his eyes suddenly stung as slick sweat beaded his brow and slid down across his paling, sallow skin. Um. Commissar? The clerical sister who was observing him asked. He's going to shoot her, isn't he? her head curiously. Are you going to respond to that communique? He stiffened a bit more for a brief second, but did not answer. Instead, sliding his finger down to the key beside the built-in Vox phone on the console. Pressing it to accept the connection and then unclipping the receiver, bringing it up to his mouth and ear. Wait. Is his Vox console literally just a landline telephone? Oh. I don't play Imperial Guard, so I wasn't really sure what it looked like because I've never built the models, but I didn't realize that's actually what it was. Huh. He cleared his throat to gain some control of his voice and then spoke into the device. This is Commissar Shadrick, he said sharply, listening closely. Mm -hmm. The connection was filled with a buzzing static and instability, but there was Just something you're else wrong about there who it is. as well. Another sound, a living one. He listened more closely, trying to make it out, though it was clear that whatever it was, was not words. It was breathing. Labored, harsh breathing. And then, just as the commissar was going to speak again, a scream... Shadrick winced, drawing the Vox away from his ear and shivering. Who is screaming, though? The sound was long, desperate, drawn out, and it contained within it the expression of a pain or fear that he had never personally heard before. The sound was horrifying, but it did not linger alone for long. The sound of a demon eating your soul? Commissar. It is good that I have finally been able to reach you," mm. said a second voice, hissing over the dwindling static of the first. Do not mind the noise. I am multitasking. 
My name is Lord Inquisitor Tarweiler, and I have a vital mission for a man like you. Oh! He wasn't already aware of this. That is actually a... Because Tarweiler was in contact with the people who were killed off early on, and that's why it was going on. So he's going down the chain to the next person he can get in contact with. That's why. For some reason, I assume that Weiler would have already had his hands on this guy because he seems like an easy mark. But apparently not. This is the first contact. Huh. Shadrook worked hard to keep his composure, straightening his posture Yeah, I'm assuming a certain Jedi could. is going to be in bad shape. How can I be of... He began to say before being cut off by another horrible scream. He swallowed down oh, a he's hard not dead yet. lump in his throat and then continued. Of service, Lord Inquisitor. He asked, The Jedi have destroyed planetary command. The central HQ is aflame. Its staff are dead or captured. The Jedi have accomplished this by releasing an unspeakably powerful daemon of the warp. Oh my god, is he... <laughs> he brings his own demon, blames it on the Jedi, and when the Jedi happen to have killed off his corrupted command staff, that were intentionally going to hamstring the Imperium, so accidentally made them stronger because the Star side killed the people who were going to hamstring themselves. He lets his own demon loose to kill a bunch of Jedi and then blames the Jedi on releasing the demon to cover up what was already done. I just, this is so, oh my God, I love this. It's like a gambit pile up, except this isn't even gambits. This is just bluff after bluff after bluff of complete and utter bullshit that you would never stop to think about because if you do, you realize, okay, the Inquisitor is saying this, and if I don't agree with him, he will eat me like the other things in the background, and I don't want to deal with that. Oh my god, the, the balls on Wyler. It's like, I hate this man, I don't like him, but I can appreciate the level of just opportunistic villainy that he is displaying right now. Oh my god. And Ripoff saying he's framing the Jedi for the Damon host. Yeah, which works because no one's going to question Inquisitor. It doesn't work if you stop to think, have the Jedi ever used demons? No, but it doesn't matter because an Inquisitor is saying it and you don't know better than to ever question an Inquisitor. You don't ever, unless you're of similar power or status. Ugh. <laughs> Uh, the best part is he's lying to Shadrick, who wouldn't really give a damn in the first place. One which they have now lost control of. Uh huh. The Inquisitor said over the choppy link. But you regain control of him, right? The pained howls of whatever task he was performing. After observing the beast and judging the moral threat inherent therein, I am now sanctioning the use of the Basilica's final protocol. What? Effective immediately. Blow up the planet. Shadrick felt like ice had just replaced all the water in his veins. Is he blowing up the planet? The final protocol. That could only mean... Blowing up the planet? Exterminatus. Called it! The Commissar breathed out into the receiver. Are they going to use yes. the planet bomb they already had or a different one? An unfortunate but necessary outcome. What the Republic has released cannot be allowed to spread. He's literally just covering up the fact that his plan didn't work. And he's destroying the planet to cover his tracks. Because honestly, the Imperium might very well win on the ground, but they could also lose. But he would lose face because all of his plots fell to nothing and everything he was trying to do is not working. He's literally rage quitting. Oh, Weiler is rage quitting right now. It's not a matter of I lost. It's a matter of I don't want anyone to even know that I lost because nothing is left to say that I did. I didn't have my plan go backwards. I'm just destroying all of you. Fuck y'all. And the contamination is already <laughs> so severe that a full evacuation would be impossible at this point. Who would they evacuate? Oh, because he gets rid of all the people he doesn't care. Just because most must die does not mean that certain others cannot be saved God, the, teeth. the inquisitor said his voice slick like caustic oil i am listening my lord 
the craziest thing about this image is that when you look at it, every single tooth doesn't actually slot in, it hits another tooth. So this is an incredibly impractical design. Oh, it's just so freaking terrible. And Hobbit said, Wilder's plan was to destroy the plant all along. Yeah, but I get the distinct feeling he's speeding it up because things aren't going to plan. Commissar Shadrick said also, they hurt in response, him. heart beating high in his chest. Good. Listen carefully. Within the armory of this basilica is a locked reliquary. Its access code is Vermilion Sky 2 11. Inside, you will These find really a lot. teleporter beacon. Once you have it, contact me for a proper tuning frequency, and I will be able to pull you from the surface. Be Wait, is he actually going to save him? Weird. Also, Hobbit, the plan was to destroy a plant. I know it sounds like he's flipping the table now, and I still stand by that. But I was wondering what he meant by a... He's building up the Imperium's resolve to work together by showing them that, no, no, the Star Wars side is actually a threat. Admittedly, he's not wrong. He just hasn't met Grievous yet. But that comes later. Before it so is going too to the plan late, to show it's a threat. Consider it the reward for loyalty in the face of great... Evil. Uh -huh. But before I take you, you Loyalty must too, ensure that the evil. final protocol has been activated. Understood? Tarweiler asked over the tire. Is he going to feed Shadrick to someone? Shadrick's mind That'd was. I mean, nice, but I don't think it would go that way. The tension moving through him, shifting and undulating <sighs> as his thoughts rushed feverishly through his scheming brain. This could still be his penultimate moment could still serve to ascend him even beyond the heights he had previously sought to reach. Considering one of the guys you're getting ascension from is a uh, demon summoner, sorry, a demon host enthusiast, well, he doesn't realize it, uh, talking about ascension is probably not a good choice right now. You might ascend into the new host. Eh, at least this guy would deserve it. But he would need to be careful, clever, and ruthless. The line he would need to walk was a sheer one, but he could balance on twine if need be. Yeah, I... Not even that I doubt him. I know for a fact he can't because he already failed at balancing things. That's why he's in the situation he's in. But he's so freaking arrogant that he probably believes he can. Uh, despite all evidence to the contrary. Also, let's see. Agent said, honestly, if he blows up the planet, thousands of Jedi on him, blames on the Republic, summon demons, and it's a huge win for him. Yeah, because it shows this is the enemy that is going so far, we must fight them. And stay unified, as opposed to splintering, which looks like it's going to happen regardless. Hell, we know it's going to happen for things in orbit that he can't destroy with the planet because they're not on the planet to be destroyed with it. And also because it would be a plot line drop that I don't think Fan would pull off. <sighs> yeah. And Hobbit said, earlier, Wyler told an officer he wanted to use Axum as a second Cadia, removing those he couldn't control and making martyrs at the same time. Yeah, I kind of figured as much. But also, I think he's speeding it up because it pissed him off. It does feel like he's flipping them all off. Maybe let it play out a little less than before. It gives me very big rage-quitting nerd energy. A uh, fan isn't here to say whether I'm wrong or not, but while he might have wanted to blow out the plan, sorry, planet, I think he's speeding it up a bit. Yeah. Also, the irony is here. If Palpatine hears, oh my god, they blew up the planet! And all of the Jedi on it. How horrible. I can see why they're getting a fruit basket. A poison fruit basket, but a fruit basket. Ugh. As long as crossing would take him to where he needed to go. I understand, Inquisitor. You can rely upon me. Just keep your Vox close. I may need further instruction before the task is complete. My portable Vox frequency is being sent electronically now. Until we speak again, the Emperor protects, said the Commissar. Hmm, yes. He does, indeed. Mm. Good hunting, Commissar. And remember to contact God, me when the mission is, so is complete. Creepy, man. Every time he's Ta on screen, Wyler, he does this. Signing off. Hissed the Imperial Agent. The Vox feed cutting just as another scream began. Ugh. Commissar Shadrick slowly placed the receiver down 
able to all but feel the clerical sister stare pressing into his back. Yeah. He caught the eyes of one of his guards and flexed his fingers in a dexterous and precise sign cant. To kill her? specific instructions to the armed member of his personal guard. And doing so from an angle that the sister behind him oh, could yeah, she not did. see. I have received a message from the Inquisition. Shadrick began to say, turning slowly to face the sister who had already put that much together from overhearing his side of the conversation. Yeah. Her eyes were wide and locked onto him fully, the urgency and alarm in her posture unmistakable. She figured in it out. Inquisition, what did they want here? She asked. You did? And everyone else. I need to know the location of the armory at the Basilica, Shadrick said instead of answering her. The sister's face contorted in thought for a moment, confused by the odd demand and puzzling over how that could relate to the most feared organization Ooh, within their vast this is imperium. Not go well. The armory? The armory is in the East Wing, under the Chapel of Punity. She going to die mid sentence? What does that have to do with the Inquisition's orders? Did I. Bang. I, I thought I heard you mention ex Exterminatus yeah. while you were speaking. Does that. She was saying as Shadrach noted the location of the armory from her description and then stepped subtly to the right. Before the clerical sister could actually complete her question, a bright flash of red light silenced her as Shadrach's signaled guard fired his hot shot yeah. rifle from his Yeah, head, I was waiting for that one. Boring into the woman's collarbone and killing her before she even knew she was dead. Her body was thrown against the wall and then crumpled to the ground like a discarded heap of worthless parts. He stepped on her as he crossed around because the he's table, enjoying the excuse. snapping his fingers and indicating towards his personal cogitator, having one of the guards quickly pack it up. His troopers did not question him or ask for an explanation. They knew better than to indulge in such frivolities, and soon he and they were striding out of the office and towards the Chapel of Punity. Getting into the center of the Basilica was absolutely necessary to engage its final protocol, and doing so was a journey on a road fraught with countless opportunities for failure. God damn. The worst part about all of this is, considering there's also the gene stealer infection that's on this planet that Weiler's completely unaware of, he's not even wrong to do this for all the wrong reasons, but it's probably the safest option because if you have a bunch of genes dealers, you don't want them because anything they can call in by being alive and missing any of them is worse than anything that can happen from Exterminatus. Exterminatus will kill you. Gene stealers bring things that eat you. It's a small difference, but one's a lot faster than the other. So before he embarked on it fully, he would be sure to take more than just hey, a teleportation Kubrick, up, beacon from the vast collection of weapons and artifacts he expected to find there. Perhaps his original plan would Creepy prove nearly hell. prophetic, incorrect only insofar as the scale of the ruination he would inflict on those who made themselves his enemies, both imperial and <sighs> foreign. Call the rest of my personal retinue. Shadrick said as he marched, arms folded and held behind his back, posture this. sharp as a razor. And how? What we do today, we do in the name of the Greater Imperium. Mm-hmm. Combi- Oh, speaking of gene stealers! I'm sure this is gonna be fine. Ship systems are starting to short out. I'm not sure we're going to. If the next words aren't, I can't hold out any longer, Captain. In a very bad Scottish Irish blended accent, I, I will be. <sighs> Make it at this point, yelled one of the serving tug captains, speaking invisibly over you know the comms to fan. the other ships which struggled along with them. Hundreds of civilian starships, from starfighters to freighters, oh. were hauling with all their might against the descending bulk of the burning Confederate cruiser. Cables and ground They're holding it up. squealed and screeched, tractor beam emitters humming and grinding against the unyielding weight of the nearly two kilometer long pillar of dirt. Holy shit, they caught it as it was falling from orbit. 
was not expecting that. I thought it'd be some kind of crazy explosion and they like crashed down, but no. It left a black smoking furrow in the sky. And within Combier and his mother's vessel, it was looking more and more like and they were the not survivors going to make it. They're just banging together that did Table it. Table tension is now at critical. They'll snap soon if the engines don't burst on us first. Venora <laughs> yelled shit. over the screeching of several alarms. Combier sat beside her, working frenziedly to divert more power to the gravitic compensators. Teeth, grit, brow hey, coated in glistening about this beads part. of sweat. Behind them, Javona watched, wide-eyed, barely able to believe the risk they were willing to take just to help this ship land where it needed to. Land is an overstatement. was closing its jaws around them. Delicate the crash. had not even begun firing at them yet. We must flee. Our power is feeble. We cannot carry it. She implored from behind them. Nope. No! Combier yelled, and Venora silently agreed. We cannot abandon our own rescue. The Republic needs us. If any of our ships break away now, we may well doom all the others. And Genova doesn't Running care about them. She just wants to be alive. An option. Mom, because get ready to begin deceleration. The final approach begins in 10 kilometers. The armored son of Axum said fiercely. I'm already trying, but the momentum on this thing is overcoming us. Venora said, Have they tried playing with heard it? over the screaming alarms. Something pressurized burst inside this of the from? ship. And three cold like jets of steam began to issue from the control consoles. Combier acting fast with his tools, working to cut them Why off. Why there was a Jedi in there? View. Javona felt herself recoil at his words, yet his candor, his unshakable drive to defend his home, his own, drew her towards him in a different way altogether. Oh, her instincts could feel how near to defeat her family had come, and as much as that drove her to hide and flee. It also propelled her into a very specific kind of search. The next generation, yeah. Also, yeah, I'm aware it's not just a sister of battle. It's a sister of battle killing gene stealers. Yeah. Her family needed replenishment. And Combier was composed of the traits they would need to one day rule the worlds beneath the void and welcome them to the stars. But these were mere instincts, subconscious programs of her genetic design. Yeah, let's go with design. That's exactly the right word. Because I'm not really sure how much the devourer, I think that's what they call it, would um actually design things. I thought it was more just slapdash. This works. Let's try something else. I'm not really sure how conscious the devourer is, actually, now that I think about it. I don't know. Something I probably need to look up. So the entire thing I said about why they're doing them all a favor by killing off the gene stealers? Never mind, they're already in ships. Even that won't help. And though they helped to fuel her moment-to-moment -moment motivations, they did not predominate them. At that moment, the actual thoughts, first and foremost within Javona's half-alien mind, were those of self-loathing and constant fear. She was helpless, completely helpless. How many times could she be nothing more than the survivor? Why did the great wills of the gods above continue to spare her life if it was just so that she could watch on helplessly as more and more of her kind and kin were taken from her? She wanted to aid them, to help them all survive, to help them beat back the corpse-worshipping murderers who had deprived her of everything. But... Javona was well aware that she had not been blessed with innate skills in technology or engineering as some of her now late brothers and sisters had. Nor was she in any way naturally gifted in the arts of combat, soldiering, or death dealing. She has the unbridled ability to be in the right place, so probably psychic on her end as well, because that would make her a Magos. Or the potential to become a Magos, which is probably what her ability will become. So I'm assuming she's going to become psychically active. And considering Combier is already a untested, I think is the phrase. Yeah, whatever. He's basically warp potential or Jedi potential, but they never had him tested because they would take him away. And uh, that's not going to happen. As so many yeah, of the other survivors of her that's family the had been before oh, I forgot capture. that. Their great father, when he had been alive had whispered oh, so to her when she was but a child and had promised her the greatest blessings which the star gods could bestow. Magos. Yet, before her gifts could be revealed or realized, 
the false angels had come and destroyed her patriarch. Good. She looked down at her hands, each one so soft and small compared to those which had crushed the life from so many of her family. Yeah. What could she do with such hands? What had the star gods expected of her? The thought in... Oh, speaking of Imagos, the image of the female Imagos, which admittedly has a really good model. Also, um... There is a certain space marine with Anakin right now. I don't think he's on the same ship as the one crashing with Ahsoka, but if they meet up, how much do Chaos Space Marines know about Tyranids? This is a weird question, but now that I'm thinking about it, I know a few stories that involve their actions bringing Tyranids about, but I don't really know if that's a thing that's kind of entered a lot of the upper echelons of the Space Marines calculations. I don't know how aware of them they are. I don't know how much they care to find out or if it's just another of, eh, alien, we'll kill him when we get to it. Because maybe it is. So I don't really know if that would be something that they're revealed to the people with Anakin, specific person with Anakin, who's also disarmed, would be a big deal or not. Admittedly, them knowing would be a matter of, well, probably should kill this thing right now. But I don't know if they would, because maybe they'll see they can bend their will, or would they just not know? Basically, what I'm asking is, does Kaon know what the hell is going on? I, I, I just don't know enough about his story to realize if he's been around for things that involve that. I'd assume so, but also I don't know so. Excited an odd heat within her, a searing emotion both human and unspeakably alien. Magic. Like a mental amalgamation composed of rage, indignation, and dark, star-born ambition. Yeah. So what if she was weak? Her faith was strong. The gods had chosen her. The patriarch had said so within his mind sermons. Even if she could not feel them, even if she lacked faith in herself, she would not let that weakness overcome her. For she was Javona of the enlightened stars, and through faith in the greater powers above, she would find a way. Javona clapped her hands together, head beginning to pound and throb with that searing emotion, rising like an invisible horn from the center of her skull. Third eye in opening. her mind, she began to pray, but the prayer was not spoken in any human tongue. It was a prayer of the synapse. A call for... Oh, so she's basically becoming a psychic beacon. Power which came both from within her and sought out from the stars as well. Her scaled crest seemed to bristle and veins suddenly gained definition around her smooth, bald head. They pulsed squirmed under her skin as she clenched teeth which sharpened in her mouth. Forbidden, hidden genes expressing themselves and manifesting within her chosen flesh. Her third eye, her alien eye, opened within her skull, looking back into her own thoughts and inciting a rapidly blossoming chain reaction. Human genes which carried within them the essence of the Emperor's psychic gift awoke entwining heretically with similar bloods and humors born of alien design. The gift of the Psyker would have been powerful within Javona had she only been born a mere human. But she was far, far more. Co yeah, uh, this is one of those few times where the Chaos Space Marines and Kaon would probably be the safer option. Zombier felt a sudden spike of pain in his head as a telepathic presence began to fill up the air around him, pushing against his hidden mind's eye uncomfortably for a couple of moments but... before he could adjust. Looking back, he gasped in a surprised breath, eyes widening and trembling at what he saw. What? Venora noticed his reaction and looked back, but all she could see was Javona curled in her seat, hands together in a fervent, silent prayer. What does but he see that's different? could see more. The shadow? He could see the lines of psychic power emanating out from her, 
brilliant, searing green and yellow, undulating out from her like living organic veins of energy, tethering her to the air around her and spreading further and further by the moment. So yeah, he's seeing the psychic beacon. So here's the crazy million dollar question on this one. Is there an equivalent in the Star Wars side to... I was going to say the Zerg. Oh, jeez. I'm pulling a blank on the Tyranids there for a second. Wow. The Tyranids. My first thought would be the Vong, but honestly, they're still admittedly way safer than the Tyranids. But I wonder if there's something else that I'm just missing. Because there's a lot of things in the deep lore that I might be missing. And there's a lot of horrors in hyperspace that could be there as well. So for all I know, maybe it's something else. Ironically, if it is the Vong, that would probably count for them as something they would hate. Mostly because the Vong right now are in the entire no psychery phase, making their entire force kind of, how to put it, not nulls, but null aspiring, even though, uh, spoilers for Legends, it's now non-canon, their entire species was being mind-controlled by a single Jedi equivalent, so there was that. Yeah. Kambir, what is it? She might actually take His over a less asked, evil version. But he did not respond. Instead, getting up and rushing to the window that was facing the Providence-class dreadnought they were struggling to carry. Outside, he could see the energy continuing to spread and grow like a spiritual slime mold in a time-lapse vid capture. Oh, that's creepy. Expanding and contracting, but coming out further and further each time it reached out through the walls of their vessel and beginning to grow and the coil can break around in. the falling Confederate flagship. Is this the power of your gods? He whispered under his breath, and as if in direct response, the alarms on the ship began to silence one by one. Venora felt an odd elation threaten her composure, her heart racing even faster as she began to check and then double check her instrumentation. For the briefest moment, she feared her ship had already suffered some critical failure, something which had shorted out her sensors. But no. Instead, she saw rampant confirmation of the impossible. By the Force, the ship is getting lighter. Systems are returning to sustainable Space magic, ranges. man. How is this possible? I don't see any new ships helping out. Venora muttered as she scanned her eyes out across her forward viewport. Also, seriously, at what point does Combi realize he's Force-sensitive? Because he's literally seeing magic no one else can see. Yeah. Also, uh, Ripoff, you said that's how the Vong don't work because they're cut off from the Force from their home galaxy. Most of them were. One wasn't. And it was the one who was secretly leading the Vong's entire crusade. I completely forgot his name, but his was the entire reveal at the very end of the final book of the Vong saga, where Jason Solo became part of the living force to fight him, before immediately being put on a bus and becoming an, an enemy that you need to kill, and then that entire plotline kind of devolved. But at the really high point of it, the big reveal was they were being mind-controlled by a Vong Jedi, essentially. Yeah. Only one. I don't remember how they said he got those powers. I don't think it was clear, but he did it. And that's the big thing. But try as she might, she could mm, not said, think see he knows? what her son could Maybe? see, and could only vaguely sense the power which had awakened the their passenger. Combeer marveled wait, for wait, wait. a few moments. The power which had see what her son could see, yeah, and could only vaguely sense the power which had awakened within their passenger. She could still sense it, though. I mean, vaguely sense it is still sensing it. Which means Combeer probably got his force sensitive from her. Okay. Combeer marveled for a few Granted, moments sense longer be just looking before up. rushing back to his seat and taking over his station again. He glanced over at Javona and saw her staring up at him. He flashed her a grateful smile and she returned it. Her few temporarily sharpened teeth somehow fitting her appearance more. Temporarily than they had sharpened. Javona felt her chest swell with a pride she could call her own as her faith was answered. And, even more than that, she could sense vaguely that Kambir was not the only one who could see her now. From below, and perhaps 
Even from above, alien eyes narrowed as they bore witness to her psychic exertion. Cutting like glowing umbra through the sky, joined on the black pall of smoke which was rapidly descending towards the battlefield below. So this isn't even just a matter of calm beer nose. This is a matter of she just announced herself to all of the Force sensitive. So all the Jedi see it. The demon host definitely sees it. Harweiler definitely sees it and realizes there's another factor in play that he did not account for, but he may recognize, considering he was just dealing with them previously. Now, whether he knew there was a cult element on top of the actual Tyrion invasion, I don't know, but we'll find out. Kaon will find out. Anakin will see that and probably not understand if he's conscious at this point. I'm not sure if he's awake or not. Oh, this is a big one of those. Hey, you remember how you thought there was only two sides of this war? <laughs> Surprise. Yeah, that's going to happen. She let herself shine brighter and brighter, exulting in her blessings and fearlessly calling out to any who could see her. As the main avenue came into view below, if there's them, not other people the many she wants Axamite to be seen by. ships fired their retro thrusters. The shadow of Trench's flagship, or rather, what was left of it, sweeping over the thickly contested battle below. But little did they know that they were bringing much more to this fight than mere reinforcements to the Republic. As hidden forces who had already been moving to rescue their captured sister redirected their approach. Moving now. In and there's confirmation there were other people behind as well. And people was probably stressed there. There's the other gene stealers. I know this is supposed to be the star gods that the cult worship was basically the Tyranids without being the Tyranids. But did anyone else think this kind of was Nurgle statue at first? Just me? Maybe just me. Into the hey, fan, you're here, man. What's up? Of this burgeoning war. And it is three sides, not just her on her own. God damn, man. <laughs> and Fan gets here right as it ends because holy shit, that was so freaking epic. Oh, I mean, I swear, that was... That was a freaking brilliant story, man. I love all the designs here. I love that... Tara Weiler is going full rage nerd, flipping the table, destroying the planet. And I will ask Fan right now. Fan, I know the entire plan was probably to destroy the planet with Weiler because we got to give a reason for the horrible things we're about to do. And you need unity and all that bullshit. But is he flipping the table early and destroying the planet because he's pissed off at having been beaten? Because it sounds like there's a bit of uh, personal feelings there. I don't know, but I'm going to pretend that's the case even if it's not. Ugh. I love this. And Javona's reveal at the end. It's like, this is a moment of epicness is what it would look like to anyone who doesn't know what they're looking at. And I'm just sitting here going, well, this is probably not good. Oh, this is awesome. I love this episode. I love the reveals. I love all the characters being brought in. I really wanted to see the fight with the night longer because that was so cool how it ran in flipped the tank shoved the gun in blew it out and it just it's so freaking cool ah uh, but this feels like every step is starting to come together it's coming to a head the pieces are all uniting and it's going to blow up in everyone's faces and i mean that both figuratively because things are going to hit the fan and also literally because exterminatus man Depending on exactly what type, though, that could go multiple ways. I'm assuming it's the bomb that they already had that could blow up the planet, because why use our stocks when we can use the local variation? But for all I know, they brought in a bunch of virus bombs, which would also be bad. Yeah, also, apparently they're technological. I think I read a few stories where they went into the various details of it, where it did show virus bombs, at least some variations of them, are more like nanite swarms eating everything. And then there's others that are actual just viruses, and then there's some that are psychic, and I'm not sure if that's an individual writer's prerogative or actual canon, so I could be very wrong. <sighs> Either way, though, guys, I am very much looking forward to what happens next, because this is becoming a full-on three-way war. Although I fully expect it will become a four-way, because 
the evil gods are aware of the corrupted clones. So, uh, yeah, it'll eventually become a four-way. But right now, we still had a menage a trois fight. <sighs> Seriously, fan, that was awesome. Kubik, your art was great. And I'm just so glad I got to check this out because I'm finally healthy enough to do this again. I was sick for a very long time, and that sucked. For everyone wondering, I don't recommend being sick. Bad choice. Shouldn't have done that. My mistake. I was curious, like, hey, what's it feel like to get a virus that just feels like you should tear your throat out for safety's sake? Don't do that. It was a mistake. Yeah. Joking aside, I actually am feeling a lot better. Between this and Thursday's stream, which was four hours, I was like, oh, wow, I can actually talk again longer than an hour. That wasn't uh, actually the case for most of the last month. Very glad to feel better. But yeah, and Fan is being ominous going, oh, you shall see. <laughs> yeah, that's not terrifying at all. More importantly, for everyone watching, thanks. This has been a blast. I'm just so freaking happy with all of this. I would actually love to go and stream the second episode right now, but also I'm out of tea and I'm still technically recovering. So my throat is killing me. But it's worth it because I can actually get this far with my throat only killing me as opposed to earlier where it actually closed up and I couldn't talk for a few hours. It's an improvement, and it's one I'm very happy about. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios. Also, if anyone has recommendations for the next title, let me know, because I don't want to check it out for spoilers, but I also want to know, damn it! The problems with being a fan. <laughs> Later, all.